Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm doing a review on the Valley Lancer Face Saver headgear. So check it out. Hey guys, Carlo here, and today I'm doing a review on the Valley Lancer Face Saver headgear. This retails for $85. I got mine in the teal colorway. You can also get this in oxblood red, black, or white. It comes in two different sizes, small, medium, like I have here, as well as large XL. There is a sizing chart on Valley's website to determine what is the correct size for you based on the circumference of your head. The headgear is made of full, genuine leather construction with layered foam padding on the inside and a steel reinforced frame on the front. This is manufactured in Pakistan and weighs in at 19.2 ounces, which is relatively heavy for a headgear, but not unusual for a face saver type headgear. For those of you that are wondering from a comparison standpoint, how it stacks up to other headgears weight wise, the winning FG 5000, which is pretty much considered the, 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 the number one when it comes to a face saver headgear, weighs in roughly at about 15 ounces. So this is basically uh, a little over 14 ounces heavier than the winning. And I believe the winning FG 5000 also uses a synthetic leather. Um, and I'm not, if I can't recall it, that it uses a plastic or a steel frame on the front section of the headgear. So the fact that this is full genuine leather and you have a steel frame is gonna add to the weight of the headgear. Uh, but that's kind of the trade-off when you're using a face saver style headgear compared to a traditional open face or cheek protector style headgear is you're sac sacrificing a little bit of weight as well as vision, your per peripheral vision for more protection, especially for those of you that have issues with your nose. Maybe you have surgery done on your nose. You just can't get punched in the face. Maybe you work in a profession or your career where you can't have any blemishes on your face and you want to continue to spar so you need something that is going to protect your face from getting bruised up or banged up uh, while you're able to still spar and enjoy the sport of boxing so that's kind of the the whole premise behind face savers for me personally i'm not a huge fan of face savers for myself because i feel that sometimes people use it as almost like a crutch uh, when they're sparring so they end up taking more damage than they should because they feel a little bit more reliant on this portion of the face saver and they feel a little bit more confident but they are often taking more shots compared to somebody that has an open face uh, headgear and they use their head movement more and they, they're a little bit more slick about their defense so there's kind of a trade-off with that so with this headgear you can see it's a very nice looking headgear i love the color this teal it's kind of like an aqua blue colorway you do have the valley logo patch on the front of the headgear very simple very clean the leather on here has a very nice shiny consistency to it. It kind of reminds me of Cleto Reyes leather. Not the quality, but just the, the actual sheen of it. And you can see it has a much more kind of a glossier look to the headgear when it comes to the leather. And you can see it does have that steel reinforced uh, bar and frame that goes in the front. The big benefit using steel compared to a, a plastic frame headgear is that you have the ability to either kind of compress in or to widen the headgear if you experience any kind of pressure points on your cheek, your temples, in your chin area, your jawline, and that helps to conform the headgear to give it a little bit more of a custom feel. So you can't spread it out or compress it in. And if the headgear, depending on the length of your nose, some people have shorter noses, some people have longer noses, you can also adjust it. So if you need this portion of the face saver to be a little bit more further out to give you a little bit more clearance on your nose then you can do so now keep in mind this piece of the headgear when it when you land a punch is supposed to dip into your mouth area not jam right into your nose so positioning is very crucial which we'll discuss here in a second you do have the the white piping you see the quality on the, this headgear is really solid very comparable to other pakistan made headgear stitching is pretty solid overall new issues there you can see a little bit of the stitching pulling away on that synthetic mesh liner, which I'm a big fan of compared to standard leather because although this soaks up sweat a little bit more than a standard leather uh, liner where you can just wipe it off, this def definitely does a better job of staying 
uh, staying on your head and not moving around so much, especially when you're sweating. So it prevents the headgear from slipping around. Another great feature with this headgear, which I'm a big fan of, is that you do have rear and top lace closures. There is no Velcro. I'm, I, I hate Velcro personally. I just feel that it doesn't give you the same customized fit that a traditional lace up does. So you do have these black flat laces with plastic tips on both the back as well as on the crown of the headgear. You'll notice that it does have your leather loops at the very top that the laces go through. The small media made in Pakistan tag as well as the warning right there. And the ear donuts are about an inch and the foam on these donuts are very stiff, a very dense foam as well as that donut uh, piece right here, that donut bridge if you want to call it, that goes across and that's maybe about three quarters of an inch of dense foam. So you do have the ear donuts on both sides to give yourself eardrum protection as well as prevent you from getting cauliflower ears. You can see that it does have that synthetic mesh liner, which I'm a big fan of. And it is pretty well padded all throughout the headgear. You have a softer consistency foam of about a half an inch on the back of your head that goes all the way around and down to the lower portion of your ear. And that is on both sides. And you do have that Volley logo. On the front of the headgear, you're looking at about an inch and a half, maybe almost two inches of firm density foam padding throughout the entire front. That's gonna overlap obviously the steel frame. So you do have a good amount of foam cushioning on the front of the headgear to give you a little bit more impact resistance. And on the forehead as well as the temple, you're looking at about two inches of medium density foam that lines up against your face. And that's a really nice feature with this headgear is that the foam that is lined up against your face is definitely on more on the medium to softer side. So it has a much more plush feel combined with that mesh liner. It gives it a little bit more of a, com of a comfortable fit. The chin strap adjustment, you notice that it does have this pad right here. It's definitely softer. I'd say that's maybe about a half inch as well as a plastic buckle. With nylon, you have the cover flap and then you also have the Velcro strap. Not a fan of the Velcro. I would have liked to see a quick clip system rather than this Velcro because over time, this Velcro can start to kind of wear out. The other thing I'm not a big fan of with Velcro is that depending on the location of it, sometimes the Velcro can come undone during sparring and you can actually scrape yourself or your sparring partner. And when you're in sparring, there's oftentimes you're gonna be really close in proximity with your partner. You might be kind of bobbing, weaving, leaning on their shoulder in a clinch and you might brush your head a certain way and that Velcro becomes undone and may end up scraping or scuffing yourself or your sparring partner. So I'm not a fan of that. Wish they would have gone with a quick clip system. So let's go ahead and put this headgear on, show you guys how it looks. Don't mind my hair, it's all messed up from wearing a hat. So I'm gonna slide it on. Slides on nice and comfortable. It feels fitted, but it's not overly tight and again, Depending on the size of your head and just the shape of your head, you can adjust the steel frame. I already adjusted mine since I've been using mine. I'll put this, the chin strap in. You can see that this pad sits against your chin so you don't just have the Velcro strap sitting directly against your skin. So I do like that. And you just run it through that plastic and underneath and it goes right there. The location of it is pretty good. I would wish it was a little bit, more, more, little bit further out on your chin. It's kind of in between my chin and my neck. So you can see my Adam apple right here. So if you tuck your chin down, you can almost feel that this strap kind of digs into your neck just a little bit, not a lot, but it definitely feels like you can feel it digging into your neck just a little. So I feel like this chin strap should be brought forward maybe like a quarter of an inch and it'd be in the perfect position. Um, peripheral vision wise, it's pretty much the same as like the ringside face saver headgear in terms of your horizontal and vertical peripheral vision. I can definitely see the bar in the front of my face, which you're gonna get with any style of face saver. Um, the big drawback with that is the vertical shot. So if any kind of uppercuts that come in is definitely harder to see compared to a traditional headgear. The other thing with uppercuts too, is when it lands and it catches this face, this face saver, it's gonna make your head flip backwards. And so now when you're hit, if you get hit with an uppercut and you're flipping backwards, there's gonna be that split second to where your head is out of position and then boom, there might be a follow-up 
shot coming in, a straight or a hook. So bang, bang, and by the time you reset your vision, it's too late already and you're already getting hit because if you get hit with this upper, again, it kind of gives you a little bit of whiplashes and knocks your head back. So again, I'm not a big fan of that when it comes to face savers. You can see when you put this on, you want it to be have a little bit of a tilt, a little bit of an angle upwards. So what happens is when you take the shot, essentially this bar needs to tilt down lower into your mouth area. So you can see right here, it's not jamming into my nose when it impacts. It's actually going to my mouth, not right into my nose. So that's the whole purpose of this face saver is that when you take a shot, it goes into your mouth area rather in directly into your nose. So peripheral vision is good for a face saver. The comfort is definitely there. I do like the liner. I like the way it feels, the temple, and this whole area around my face doesn't have any discomfort. Uh, rotating around, you can see that the ear donut placement is right exactly where it needs to be at. The top crown closure feels good, as well as the rear lace-up closure. You see I do have full mobility and rotation of my head with that tapered neckline, and you do have that rear lace closure. Good thing about lace-ups is that you can adjust the laces on both the top crown as well as the rear closure for your head shape and that's it only thing you'll need to ever do to undo or install is going to be the chin strap because it's really going to be the correct circumference and height of your head the top closure is for the depth that your head sinks into the head here so you can see on that side as well on this left ear donut uh, it's a it's a perfect position and overall the headgear is very comfortable at the price point that this comes in at $85, I think it's a great price point because most favor, uh, fa favors, face savers that you see out there are usually over $100. And uh, the fact that you're getting a genuine leather headgear, it does have a steel frame. I do like the, the, the fact that you get different colorways. You know, ringside and title usually have, it's either black or red or white. With this, you get some pretty cool color colorways like this aqua blue or, or that oxblood red and you have two different sizes to choose from. Um, I just wish that they would correct this chin strap right here. And to me, if you put like a quick clip system, it would make this headgear perfect. I do love the crown and the rear lace closures. The symmetry and the, the proportions are, are perfect. The ear donuts are, are exactly where they need to be at. The vision is, is right where it needs to be for a face saver type, type headgear. When you take shots to the front, this bar dips into your mouth area like it's supposed to, not against your nose. So I definitely think Valley has a winner with his headgear. They just need to fix this chin strap. And I definitely think um, this would be one of the better face saver uh, headgears out there, uh, you know, for the price point that it comes in at. Yes, it is a little bit heavier, but again, that's kind of a trade off when you're getting a headgear like this. And to be quite honest with you, you know, with something like this, you really don't really feel the weight when it comes to three or four ounces. You're, you're so busy doing what you're doing and sparring that really the, the, the weight is gonna be neglig negligible at that point. So overall, really satisfied with he this headgear. Um, I think in terms of comparing it to the other ones, I'm gonna have to do a, a top five or a top 10. And I could definitely foresee this being in the top five just for the value to money ratio with this headgear sizing and colors that are offered uh, and the whole thing. So if you guys have any questions or comments, make sure you guys leave them down below in the comments box. I'll put the link in the description box. You can find this Valley Lancer face over headgear. And I'll see you guys later. Take care.